Revelation 10, uh, before I get started, um, uh, this week uh, on Pastor Mike Online, um, I showed uh, some pictures of what um, is put forth to be um, the mummified bodies of aliens from Peru. Uh, I followed this story uh, for several years when it, when, when it first broke, and there's more to it than just this, and some people believe it, some people don't. But uh, I talked about this on uh, Thursday, and um, I read the comments on the YouTube uh, post that I made, and like I say, some people believe that some people didn't. But they've actually found another skeleton, another mummy, um, that they think pretty much nails the issue of whether or not these are alien or not. Since, since I mentioned it Thursday, they found another mummy. And um, <clears throat> so I'd, I'd say that pretty much nails it. That's, that's alien. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Steve Geltz, for that one. That got, a, that got a laugh out of everybody. Revelation 10. Um, this is one of my favorite chapters to study. Um, I take a position that's not, it's not uh, necessarily um, the, the most popular position, but there are. Uh, certain scholars and certain people that I've read that uh, would agree uh, with what I think is going on here. And I will just say this, when I uh, first studied this, um, I did not use a commentary, I didn't use uh, anything else. In fact, there, I will say that I, there was one commentary that I looked at uh, for Revelation 10, and it was written by Tim LaHaye, who wrote the Left Behind series. And... Um, I found a lot of his suppositions to be uh, wanting, very much wanting, uh, and not biblically based. Uh, for instance, when, um, when the, uh, this angel cries out, and he, and he roars out, um, then seven thunders uttered their voices, and Tim LaHaye said that these seven thunders are the seven stages that the Roman Empire went in from beginning to end. And I read that and I'm going, where in the world is he getting that? Where, where does he... Who invented this idea that the Roman Empire went in seven stages? I, so I, I just sort of had the idea that he made this up or somebody else made it up and he was just uh, repeating what he had read somebody else say. Um, but there was no biblical backing whatsoever. However, and we'll do this when we get to it, if you study thunders in the Bible, you'll recognize that it's God's voice. God's voice sounds like, remember when, uh, um, I can't remember what God said. I think he said, um, this is my beloved son. When he said that, the Bible says some said that it thundered. They heard a thunder. They didn't necessarily hear the speech, but they heard the thunder. And there's other passages in the Bible uh, to lay that out. So I believe that those seven thunders are something that God has said that John did not write down. And we'll leave it at that for now. Let's read uh, down a few verses. Uh, Revelation 10, verse 1. I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was, as it were, the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And um, all of these, I think, are relevant to identifying this angel. And he had in his hand a little book open. The last time we saw Jesus in the book of Revelation, what was he doing? He was opening a book. He was unsealing it. Uh, so now he has it open. He set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot upon the earth. That's dominion. And he cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Now we get past the alien, and there we go. So um, the last time we were together, I was mentioning that 
just because it mentions an angel, that this is an angel, that does not in itself uh, cancel out the idea that this could be Jesus Christ. Um, I know we talked about Genesis 48, the angel which redeemed me from all evil. They kept, the King James translators capitalized that because they understood that this particular angel in Genesis 48 was in reference to the Lord who had wrestled with uh, Jacob. And that is when the Lord, that angel, um, uh, called him Israel. He said, your name's not going to be um, Jacob anymore. It's going to be Israel. Um, Exodus chapter 3, we have the mentioning of the angel of the Lord, and then the Lord, and then God, all in the same context of one that's speaking from the burning bush. Uh, Exodus 23, uh, behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. Now think about this, because I think this speaks directly to what we're seeing in Revelation chapter 10. God said, behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way. Now, how did God lead the Israelites through the wilderness? What were they following during the day? Pillar of cloud. What were they following during the evening? A pillar of fire. And if you'll notice this angel, his feet are as pillars of fire. Okay? So, kind of put these two ideas together. In verse 21 here, back in Exodus 23, Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not. So this is not an ordinary angel. For he will not pardon your transgressions. What angel has the power to forgive somebody's sins? None. Michael doesn't. Gabriel doesn't. Lucifer definitely doesn't. Jesus does, if we trust him. For my name is in him. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. How many of you have enemies and adversaries? Say amen. You know what your biggest enemy is? Yourself. That's exactly right, Brother George. I fight that off. Every day, every day, sometimes I win, sometimes I don't. Um, but I like the fact that God or Jesus Christ is an enemy to my flesh, an enemy to myself, an adversary to my flesh, to myself. Verse 23, for mine angel shall go before thee, think, Revelation 10, his feet as pillars of fire, and bring thee into the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Boom. All your enemies gone. So, um, looking at this angel with its feet as pillars of fire, I think that connects us then to the ministry of Christ here, who led them through a um, earthly wilderness into an earthly uh, place. Come on in. Then um, the angel himself, Jesus Christ, leading them into a heavenly place. How you doing? I'm fine as frog hair. Judges, yes, Gary. 50 cents per question. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay. Um, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God's Son. Okay, these three are one. If you have one, you have the others. Okay, so, all right. Uh, Judges chapter 6. Look at this. This, here again, this is an angel that we know is Christ. 
This is, um, let's see here, Gideon. The story of Gideon. Um, in verse 21, then an angel of the Lord put forth, here it is, the angel of the Lord put forth the end of the staff that was in his hand and touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. Gideon uh, had received from this angel a prophecy saying that God was going to use Gideon to lead the Israelites to victory uh, over their enemies. And Gideon said, why me? I'm like the least in my father's house. We are the least among our people. We're, the, we're just poor country people. Why did you pick me? Surely there's somebody else out there. And I think God would say, that's why I chose you. Because you are the least. Amen. Amen. You are the least. You're not the best. You're not the brightest. You're not the most wealthy, the most powerful. God does not choose that to show forth his power. He takes the weak things to show forth his strength. He takes the small, insignificant things to bring down those things that are big. He uses the poor of this world to show that we've got more wealth than all the wealthy people in the world combined. Amen. If you've got salvation, you've got the word of God, you are a wealthy individual. Amen. And so, um, so here the angel of the Lord, uh, a Gideon wants to know that this is really from God. And I, I, I'm going to throw in my two cents worth on this. Every other God, when receiving an offering like this, would take it. Steal it. In other words, lesser gods need gifts and money and sacrifices and bribes in order to do what the people want them to do. But notice what God does with his offering of unleavened cakes. And he has, uh, uh, I think it's a lamb that he is uh, boiled in broth. And he brings that over for an offering, for a gift to this angel of the Lord. So when the angel of the Lord put forth the end of his staff that was in his hand, he touched the flesh and the unleavened cakes. And there rose up a fire out of the rock and consumed the flesh and the unleavened cakes. He poured out the broth. He told Gideon, pour out the broth that is in that pot. So he poured it out. What good does broth do if you pour it out? Can you put it back in the bucket? No, even the Bible says you can't do that. So this angel's not interested in the broth. He puts his staff down upon the rock. The fire eats up uh, the, the, the meat and the cakes. And now they're ashes. What's left? Nothing. Now Gideon knows this is the right God. Because our God does not need us to give him something before he will do something for us. Amen. Because if it was like that, then it would be the rich people, it would be the powerful people who would receive salvation. And us poor people would never, ever attain to it. And I'll tell you that I can tell you this beyond any doubt. Some of the greatest things that God has ever done to me, with me, for me, and through me has not been when I was at my best. In some cases, they were done when I was at my worst. And if you go back and be honest about your life, you will see that it really wasn't your obedience that brought God to your rescue. It was His grace. Amen. So when Gideon perceived that he was an angel of the Lord, Gideon said, Alas, O Lord God, for because I have seen an angel of the Lord face to face, and the Lord said unto him, Peace be unto thee, fear not, thou shalt not die. Why would Gideon be afraid to see an angel if this wasn't the Lord? Okay? We have another situation just like that, Judges 13. This is the story of Samson's, the prophecy of Samson's birth to Manoah and his wife. And so the angel of the Lord appeared unto his wife first and said, you're barren, but you're going to have a child, but he's going to be a Nazarite from birth. He's not going to eat any uh, grapes, raisins, no wine. Uh, it's not to touch any dead thing, no razors to come upon his head. 
And so the angel of the Lord in verse 16 said unto Manoah, uh, he appears now unto uh, Samson's father, Manoah, and he said, Though thou detain me, I will not eat of thy bread. If thou wilt offer a burnt offering, thou must offer it unto the Lord, for Manoah knew not that he was an angel of the Lord. And Manoah said unto the angel of the Lord, What is thy name? That when thy sayings come to pass, we may do thee honor. And the angel of the Lord said unto him, Why askest thou thus after my name, seeing it is a what? Secret. The things that we now know were a secret to them back in the Old Testament, including the recognition of the Son of God being Jesus Christ, Emmanuel. Um, Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Word of God, the Word, all of these ways, the Lamb, the Judge, the Creator, all of these ways that we know Christ now, they didn't know who that was. And so the angels like, this is the Lord. This is, let's say that this angel is the Lord. And this angel says, I can't tell you my name. It's a secret. And why would you ask? It's a secret. I'm not telling you what my name is. If he would have told him what his name was, he probably would have said, I'm Jesus. I'm your savior. So verse 18 or verse 19. So Manoah took a kid with a meat offering and offered it upon a rock unto the Lord. And the angel did wondrously and Manoah and his wife looked on. Um, turn, I don't have my Bible there because I missed the most important part. If you're looking in Judges chapter 13 then you're doing better than I am this morning. Um, if you look at verse 21, but the angel of the Lord did no more appear to Manoah and to his wife, then Manoah knew that he was an angel of the Lord. Verse 22, and Manoah said unto his wife, we shall surely die because we have seen who? God. But his wife said unto him, if the Lord were pleased to kill us, he would not have received a burnt offering and a meat offering at our hands. Neither would he have showed us all these things, nor would, as, nor would as at this time have told us such things as these. And the woman bare a son and called his name Samson, and the child grew, and the Lord blessed him. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zor and Eshtael. But the bottom line is, that the wife was right. If, if this was, if God intended to kill us, why would he tell us all these things? Why, do he tell, why would he tell me I'm going to have a son who's going to be the, the, the savior of, of our people? Um, but Manoah knew that looking upon this angel, he said, we're going to die because we've, we've just seen God here. He recognized who he was referring to, who he was talking to. He was talking to God. God in the form of Christ, the angel of the Lord. All right? Now, Malachi, look at this. One of the ways Christ is identified in the Old Testament, Malachi chapter three, behold, I will send my messenger. The word messenger in Greek is angelos. It's where we get the word angel and where we get the word evangelism or evangelist and evangel evangelist has it's got the word angel in it he's a bringer of good tidings in other words he preaches the gospel he's a messenger of the gospel and angelos is an angel they were the messengers of god god used them to carry forth messages uh to give dream interpretations or to whatever uh, in this case, Christ then is that messenger of the Lord. Behold, I will send my messenger and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom ye seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant. And the covenant is the new covenant, not the renewed old covenant. Jeremiah 31, 31 makes that very plain that God said, I'm going to give you a new covenant, not like the covenant that I made with your fathers. At Mount Sinai, but this is going to be a new one. I'm going to, I'm going to write my word on their hearts and I'm going to forgive all their sins. I'm just going to blot their sins out for having done nothing at all. I'm going to erase all their sins. 
That's the new covenant. Uh, so Christ then is the messenger of that covenant. Now, take a look up on the screen. I noted one day that if you find any biblical office in the Bible, like angel, high priest, shepherd, prophet, judge, apostle, king, there are earthly representations of that. And then Christ is always the head of every one of those offices. It's like uh, in modern times it would be the president and his cabinet. Uh, even though we have a uh, department, of, department of education and there is a man who is the secretary of education, the final decision always rests with the president to do what uh, he feels is right or do what he's being advised to do by his advisors, by his departments, his secretaries. We have a uh, uh, Department of Defense and we have a Secretary of Defense and they um, are probably telling Sleepy Joe, quit sending all of our money to, to, to uh, Ukraine. Uh, but anyway, there are angels and then there is the angel, capital A, angel of the Lord. We have high priests such as... Um, Aaron, Moses' brother. We have the high priest of Levi, but Christ is high priest after a different order than Levi. He's not from Levi. He was of Judah. And so Christ is the high priest after the order of Melchizedek, an angelic order of priests in heaven. We have the shepherds, and then we have the chief shepherd, who is Jesus Christ. We have prophets such as Elijah. We have Enoch. Uh, we have Moses. We have David. We have all these men who were prophets. Isaiah. We have prophets in the Bible, but we have the prophet of God. Um, I think the woman at the well said, Art thou that prophet? She knew who she was referring to. The one that Moses talked about. The prophet of God. We have judges in this world. You have judges in the book of Judges. But Christ is the righteous judge. We have apostles. But Christ is the apostle of our profession. The chief apostle of all apostles. We ha and he's not, the chief apostle is not called the Pope. Amen? I'm sending a signal to anybody listening this morning, anybody listening in days past this morning, and especially to all of our Kenyan friends, there is a stronghold in your area governed by the Pope of Rome. Uh, resist that devil. Maybe he'll flee from you. Say amen, church. Um, that devil and those priests in those areas where we're trying to minister uh, have done horrendous things, wicked things to try to stop us from feeding people. I've got pictures this morning. We did a new feeding, feeding people, helping people, teaching people. They've done terrible things. Um, and the chief apostle is Jesus Christ. That's who I've appealed to for our help. We have kings. He's the king of kings. We have sacrifices. Christ is our sacrifice of our Passover. So any office that you have, any biblical standing that you have, such as angel, Christ is always the head. He's the chief of all the angels. Now, in Hebrews chapter 1, turn there. This has been brought up... Uh, as sort of an argument against Revelation chapter 10 and Christ being the mighty angel who comes down from heaven because Hebrews 1 says to which of the angels did God give what he gave to Christ and the scriptures are true I can be wrong 
from time to time and will be wrong from time to time. And if you put too much faith in me uh, and put me up on a pedestal, then I'm sorry, but God will probably make me look foolish in your eyes just so you'll understand that I'm not much of anything. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 4. Who being made, he's speaking of Christ now, because in verse 2, he hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. Verse 4, being made so much better than the angels, and he has. He is much better than all the angels. As he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. They are the angel, little a. He is the angel, capital A. He is the son of God. They are sons of God. They are lesser than, not equal to, and not greater than Jesus. Verse 5, for unto which of the angels said he, meaning God, at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Did God say that to Michael? No. No. Gabriel? No. Lucifer? Definitely not. Did he say it to Christ? Yes. Does this, this mean then that Christ is a created being? No. That's cleared up in other places in the Bible, many other places before Abraham was. I am. And, and I am is always present tense. I am. I am. I am. I am that I am. Um... Christ, we've been studying Revelation, or excuse me, John 17 on Wednesday night, and Jesus uh, is praying that prayer to his Father, and, and he says, Share with me the glory that we had before the world was. Meaning that he always was the Son of God, is, and always will be the Son of God. I don't quite understand it, but I believe it. Uh, and again, verse uh, 5 I, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. Now think about that one. Michael doesn't let anybody worship him. Gabriel doesn't let anybody worship him. There was an angel. Um, oh, I can't think of where it was. But anyway, angels don't let anybody worship them except one. What did he try to get Jesus to do? Fall down and worship him. Jesus said, Jesus, I, I'm just thinking he's going, well, I want to say uh, it's going to be the other way around here before too long. And he quotes scripture. But anyway, um, verse seven, and, the, and of the angels, he said, who maketh his, his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. That's what he made the angels out of. But unto the son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Is the Son of God, God. According to Hebrews 1.8, it is. Unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. Whew. All right. Now, back to Revelation 10. We got a little time for that bell goes dingy, dingy, dingy. Revelation 10.1. So... Any questions on, could this be Christ being an angel? Any questions? Gary? None? After I started charging you 50 cents, you got real quiet. Uh, see? Yeah. He had to enter this world somehow. And he chose to enter it through a human body. Oh, what a savior, I say. Oh, what a savior, I say. Being born with the same flesh and blood that you and I have. And then having it sacrificed on the cross. Only Christ could do that. Amen and amen. Anybody else? Anybody, you're okay to disagree with me too. You're all right. I won't, I won't jump on you. I probably won't talk to you for a month, but it, no, I'm just kidding. 
Yeah. Man was made a little lower, and Christ then was made a little lower than the angels. Okay? Um, so anyway, it doesn't, Scripture cannot be broken, and this does not break Scripture, in other words. Okay? It does not break Scripture. It does not violate any portion of scriptures whatsoever. And that's usually what I look for. If somebody tries to tell me something and it either is totally not in the Bible or it forces something in the Bible to be wrong, it breaks scripture and it cannot be true. It just cannot be. So again, you're, you are free to disagree, stay by the bell. Study, I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow was upon his head. Study clouds. That's your homework assignment this week. Study cloud. Clouds. Cloudingly. Any other version of the word cloud? I made that one up. Cloudier. Okay? Cloudy, I think, is in there. So study all the places where you find clouds. When, look, at, look at the place where God says, when I bring a cloud over the land when I bring a cloud okay you're gonna see something there and hopefully it'll bring a smile to your face and be a blessing all right father we just thank you so much for this book for your word Lord I love proclaiming it I love talking it I love saying it talking about it even if I'm wrong father even if I'm wrong on something Lord I love your word because it never ever is and father i thank you god for the grace that you've given each one of us but me especially lord to be in this place this morning to speak your word to share your word and for us to fellowship in that word we're all here dear god because of one thing and that is your son jesus christ and the word of god we ask you to bless them and magnify them in this place. We pray in Jesus' name and all of God's people said, Amen.